As expected, Conor Ben has come out swinging at his doubters and detractors after being cleared by the WBC of any wrongdoing regarding his failed PED tests. Among the people he's been taking swipes at are former opponents Chris Algieri and Chris Van Heerden, as well as current welterweight champion Errol Spence. He said this about the first two. I see Chris Algieri and Chris Van Heerden, former opponents of mine didn't make it past six rounds between them, both piping up. I'll rematch you both while tested every week and I promise you both don't make it past two rounds. I forgot to mention, I'll fight both of you on the same night. And regarding Errol Spence, he said, you've been talking the most and well, I am reinstated by the WBC. I'll have you next. You worry about handling your drink driving convictions. Spence responded to Conor Ben's tweet with the following. Drinks and PEDs are two different things. Difference between me and you is I owned up to my stuff. You a cheat, just like your daddy. Ben then responded with, proven innocent. I ain't raising my hands to something I ain't done. You're convicted, big difference. Is that the excuse you lot are making over there after my dad dealt with your world champions? Finally, Spence replied with, I might be in the UK soon. Tell your papa come and have half a pint with me. No hard feelings for his son, just a sucker. He's a fake passing out in the locker room to skip the drug test against G-Man. They should have waited for him to wake up. I don't care if you call me out. That's what you're supposed to do. And I respect it. It lets me know you're hungry. But talking about some more stuff when you live in a glass house is dot, dot, dot. Now, just to add some context to what Errol Spence said there regarding passing out in a dressing room, he was referring to a rumor that Nigel Benn conveniently passed out in the dressing room following his fight against Gerald McClellan as soon as the British board turned up and asked him for a sample. Now, while it's entirely possible that Nigel Benn was on something that night, he was never caught. And regarding passing out in the dressing room, that was one of the most savage and brutal fights I've ever seen in my life. Nigel Ben's jaw was swollen to the size of a grapefruit and he was apparently in a blood for several days afterwards. He took tremendous punishment in that fight and would have been severely dehydrated and probably concussed afterwards. So passing out in the dressing room under those circumstances isn't really very strange in and of itself. I also find it interesting that while American fighters and fans are quick to discredit the achievements of Nigel Benn based on rumors and suspicion of PED use, they're not so quick to discredit the achievements of their two best super middleweights in the 1990s in Roy Jones Jr. and James Tony, who were both actually caught using PEDs. In any event, Conor Benn still has a lot to do to win over the British public who do not seem convinced by the WBC's findings. His promoter, Eddie Hearn, has said that Conor Ben might now reapply for his British license and subject himself to the British board and UCAD's own investigation. If he doesn't do that, then he's probably gonna have to actually get in the ring and beat someone like an Errol Spence or another top American fighter in order to redeem himself in the eyes of the British public. I don't think that a fight against Chris Eubank Jr. would do it at this stage, in light of Eubank Jr.'s recent loss to Liam Smith, nor do I think a win over an ancient Manny Pacquiao would help that much either. All this rhetoric he's coming out with is just turning the public against him even more. Perhaps he's not bright enough to figure that out, or maybe he's just decided to embrace the bad guy role. Interestingly, the Errol Spence-Keith Thurman fight still hasn't been officially announced. Are PBC struggling to come up with the money? If that is the case, would Errol Spence actually entertain a defense against Conor Ben? Presumably, he'd be a lot cheaper than Keith Thurman, and the fight might still do relatively good numbers given Conor Ben's family name and the publicity generated by his recent PED controversy. Ben, to my knowledge, doesn't have a US TV deal, which might mean that he's free to fight on whatever network Errol Spence chooses, be it Showtime or Fox. But on the flip side, PBC have this long history of being difficult to work with regarding fights between their cash cows and opponents who are signed to rival promotional companies, particularly Matchroom. 
Conor Ben will probably have to fight his way up to the position of mandatory challenger in order to get the opportunity to face someone like Errol Spence. The WBC say that they will reinstate Conor Ben in the top 15 when they next update their rankings, but as it stands right now, Conor Ben isn't ranked in the top 15 of any of the sanctioning bodies. And incidentally, nor is Jerome Ennis, which to me seems pretty bizarre. And I say that in relation to Ennis, not Ben. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about all the things I've talked about in this video. Leave your comments below. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalog of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment. You can cancel at any time and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.